No good times that made us laugh I waved them back, yeah I thought we'd get to see forever But forever has blown away It's a so hard to yesterday. Oh yeah, I don't know where this road is gonna lead to. Oh yeah, all I know is where. Yeah, and what we've been through, yeah If it gets me to tomorrow I hope that it's worth all the pain So hard So yesterday Hi, my name is Paul Watson, and I'd like to welcome you to the celebration of life for my youngest brother, Keith Watson. Now, Keith was the youngest boy of eight children, and um, we had the unfortunate experience of having both of our parents uh, to deceased at a young age, and so all of the eight children uh, were raised each other together, and so what this did is it really created a very strong bond between all of the children. And, um, and that bond remains throughout all of our adult lives as well. And um, it, this was um, particularly important for Keith because Keith really was a very family oriented person. So he really connected, spent a lot of time uh, with with our family members as well as with his own friends, but uh, family was never uh, far away from him uh, in terms of his thinking and in terms of his interactions with everyone in the family. Now, um, Keith also, um, he grew up with a very strong spiritual foundation. And I think that that spiritual foundation really kind of shaped the way that Keith uh, decided to live his life and went through life in that way. And what I mean by that was he was really incredibly kind and loving. Um, you know, as I was thinking about this, uh, what I was going to say in the celebration, and I was thinking about Keith, that I, I had to realize that in all the years, um, I never really knew anybody who disliked Keith. Um, I don't know anyone that really had a harsh word to say about him. Um, and, and I'm not just talking about family members, but I'm talking about his friends, uh, people that he worked with on his uh, jobs. Um, he was just this really very, very likable and very loving and caring individual. Um, and that's one of the things that um, made uh, Keith so special. Um, you know, as you go through this uh, memorial site, you're gonna see a lot of pictures um, and a lot of comments from family and friends. 
Um, and all of those things point to the fact about how uh, loved Keith was, that he, you know, each one of the people that he met felt like they had a special relationship with him. And in fact, you did. You had certain kind of interactions that you would, would think about and remember, and that would make Keith really a, a personal connection. So that when Keith would walk into a room that was full of people that he knew, um, each one of them would feel like Keith was there for them uh, because he could interact with you in that way. Now, the thing that I always think about personally, uh, when I think about Keith, the first thing that comes to mind is his smile. His smile that would just light up a room. That's particularly why I chose this picture because this particular picture, even though it's an older picture, but it captured that smile. That's the thing that I always will first come to mind when you think about Keith. And um, I think that would probably be true for just about anybody that knew him pretty well. Um, he could just light up a room. Um, he, uh, his smile would cause you to smile, it was contagious. Um, and you just enjoyed being around him and being with him all the time. Um, and that was just the kind of person that he was. Keith had a lot of interests. Um, he loved sports. Um, when high school, he played uh, basketball and was a standout basketball player. Um, and not only that, but his younger nephews um, and uh, cousins, he would also work with them to improve their skills if they liked that particular game. Um, of all the sports, that was really the most special to him. And I know my son, Paul, who also was a basketball player in high school, but learned a lot um, of technique and how to train and all that from Keith. And so um, Keith would always be willing to share with you any knowledge, any insights, anything that, that you were interested in and he was interested in with you, he, he would spend time with you to, to really develop that. So Keith, um, was just um, a joy. I, I, you know, there's no other way to say it, um, that he was a person who uh, connected with people. He really loved people. Um, and um, I always think that um, my life personally was enriched by having him as a brother and being able to always count on him to show up for family functions, to be supportive of all of the family, um, and to always engage us in something that was cheerful uh, and joyful um, and aspects of it. And he, he definitely was not a person that was going to bring you down when you spent time with him. So that's why the loss of Keith is, is very, very difficult for the family and friends. Um, he, as we think about losing a loved one, uh, we realize that it is painful and it also seems like it's unnatural um, in the sense that we all have the desire to live and to live long time. Um, but um, that's not the way that it actually is in the world. Um, but one of the things I think that is important, and as I mentioned that Keith had a strong spiritual foundation in his life. Um, well, that, that spiritual foundation does provide some, uh, some uh, soothingness to, to a loss at a time like this. And there's a, there's a couple of things that in the Bible I'd just like to share with you that um, I think Keith believed. And uh, it is really reassuring for those of us that are left behind. Um, and the first one is that, you know, the, the Bible talks about in the book of Ecclesiastes um, that when somebody dies, um, they are conscious of nothing at all. Um, and that's soothing because that what it means is that all of the pain and suffering that we go through in life, um, in death, there is no more. So we don't have to worry about Keith in terms of where what he would be going through at this point, because uh, the Bible reassures us that um, there is no consciousness in death and that um, in fact, there's no more pain and suffering in our lives. Um, you could look at that up on yourself in Ecclesiastes 9, 5 and 10. That really helps us to really appreciate that. 
The other thing, though, is that the Bible reassures us that also we won't always have to go through this uh, pain of losing a loved one. In, in fact, in the Bible book of Isaiah uh, 25, uh, verse number eight, God promises us um, through his word that he would actually swallow up death forever um, and wipe every tear from the eyes of uh, people from the experience of death. Not only does it say that, but also it goes further in the Bible. It talks about the holds off the hope of a resurrection um, and that this resurrection would allow people uh, of faith, people who have lived their lives in harmony with God's will to be able to be reunited with their loved ones again. And so this particular um, spiritual faith um, really strengthens me at this time to look forward to an opportunity where I could really uh, once again embrace Keith, uh, to see that smile, uh, to give him a big hug and to receive a hug from him. Um, I think that all of us that in the family, and I could speak for all the family, I could speak for all of his friends, um, that we all would, would certainly look forward to the opportunity to see Keith again and to spend time with him. He's just made an indelible, uh, just an indelible kind of uh, impact on all of our lives. And um, I just, uh, you know, I am just so happy that I've had this person as my brother and to somebody to learn from, somebody to be upbuilt by, someone to um, really have cared for and loved me um, and in turn, I've had to uh, care for and love him as well. Each of us um, that know Keith will have our own unique experiences. As I said earlier, um, the loss is going to affect all of us very deeply. Um, but we hold out the joy that we've had of really knowing him and having the opportunity to love him in the same way that he loved us. So with that, I, I really would encourage you to uh, look at the rest of the pieces of this particular memorial, uh, the individual comments, some of the pictures that just will bring joy and happiness to our lives. Um, but most of all, when you think of Keith, I want you to think of that smile that's looking at you right now, because that really says it all in terms of the, the impact that he had on us and the, the feeling that we have towards him. So with that, I will we'll stop now and, and I want you to really look through and enjoy and look at this as a celebration because it is a celebration of his life. Um, the pain that comes along with loss is one thing, but we will move on from that. It will take time, but we will. But the joy will never go away. We'll always, always cherish those moments that we had with Keith. And, um, and we pray that all of us will be able to uh, continue to encourage one another and strengthen one another as he has would have done if he was here with us. So with that, I thank you for the time and I encourage you to continue on showing the same kind of love to one another that Keith had shared with all of us. Thank you. In the Bible, at Ecclesiastes 7, 1 and 2, it reads, A good name is better than good oil, and a day of death is better than a day of birth. Better to go to the house of mourning than to the house of feasting, for that is the end of every man, and the living should take, take it to heart. I remember hearing this scripture many times at the Kingdom Hall, and it always made me reflect on also having a good name. And when I think of that, I think of my brother Keith. Even growing up, he always had that wonderful smile. He he really loved his family. He was very good with his friends, and even as a young child. And he was always caring and giving. And by having a good name, that makes you reflect in, um, you know, on life. And do we all want to have a good name? And how we treat people, and how we want to be remembered. And I do also remember my brother Keith growing up, 
he would play with his brother Kevin and his sister Kim, and they always used to play all kinds of different games. And even as growing up, you know, he always still stay connected to all the members of his family, whether in California or in Connecticut or even in New York. And again, by having a good name, it makes people to remember you with fond memories. So again, when I think of my brother Keith, I always have fond memories of growing up, playing with him, enjoying his company, having cookouts and barbecues and weddings and just family get-togethers. It was always an enjoyable time, and he'd always leave with a plate of food. That's it. My ever-loving brother-in-law, Keith. You notice a scripture at uh, Acts 24, 15, talks about the resurrection hope. So that's what brings me a lot of comfort, just knowing that Keith is just temporarily in a sleep state. But you know, when you think about Keith, there's so many experiences that uh, we can go over. And there's one in particular, him and my daughter, Helen. Uh, one day, Helen comes home looking very frustrated. I said, Helen, what's wrong? She says, Ma, Keith wanted me to drive him around and look for an apartment. Yeah, so they did that. And then she says, well, later, two hours, after about two hours, he wanted to stop at the store and get something to drink. And so she says, he gets out of the car and says, Helen, I need a couple of dollars to get a soda. And Helen says, I don't have any money for, for anything, Keith. So she says, Keith reaches in his pocket and pulls out a 20 and says, Helen, you're going to make me break a $20 bill? And so... When she related that to me, I said, well, that's your uncle. That's how he is. But we're going to miss Keith. He would do anything for you, though. He helped me so much around the house. And we're waiting for that resurrection hope. You know, the two, the two things that uh, when I think of Keith, I think of two things that are, was his passion. One we know was basketball and one was cars. We know that whatever Keith had in, in terms of a car, it might have started out as a bucket. But you know what? At the end of the day, it turned into a whip. He put rims on it. Maybe he put a new paint job. He put the stereo in. But whatever he did, that car was transformed. And we always know about his passion for basketball. I'm sure many of you, many of you remember the, the games on Elm Street. We used to play in the backyard. And those games, they were always played with passion. They were always played with like they were the NBA Finals. So that when we think of Keith, that's what we always remember. And some of you may know on my Twitter feed, there's a picture of me playing basketball. And what's interesting about that picture is that picture was from a game when we had a family, a family cookout and there was maybe eight, nine, ten of us. We were playing 21. But the real thing of that was Keith won that game. And if I remember correctly, I think he was wearing Tim's. So that's, again, that's, that's what we know about Keith. He had those two passions for, for basketball, for cars, most importantly, for life. And also when I think of Keith, is one thing that comes to my mind as well. There was a uh, Martin Luther King on his I've been to the mountaintop speech, said that longevity has its place and that he would like to live a long life. But the real impact of what he said was not that longevity was his, his, his goal, but his goal was to have an impact upon people, to create a legacy, to create something for other people. And you know what? That's what Keith did. I think all of us could, could say from our hearts that Keith touched us, and then, just as uh, Martin Luther King did say, that longevity did have its place, but the impact on people's lives was the most important thing. Keith, we miss you. I'm just sitting here thinking about my brother. I just wanted to say he's going to be truly and dearly missed. Um, he's my best friend. and. Uh, I love him, and it's not going to be the same without him. But 
He's truly gonna be missed by me. I love you, Keith. How do I express my affection and my my sorrow over the loss of my brother Keith? It's been a difficult time. Sometimes it's even difficult to find the words that are the most um, expressive of how you feel. I often think about at the time of loss and death, about a, what the Bible speaks to. You know, in, in Martha and Mary, when they, when they um, talked about their brother Lazarus and said, when Jesus came, the scriptures speak to, um, they came and ran to him and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my, our brother would not have died. So they experienced the true grief of the loss of someone. But Jesus spoke to that those who have faith in him never die. And it speaks of, the Bible speaks of a resurrection where those who we love will come back to life again. So that's my hope and dream for my brother Keith. He was a, such a wonderful, warm, loving, caring person. He had a smile that lit up the whole, his whole face and countenance and really lit up the whole room. He loved his family deeply. He loved to have a good time. He loved animals and especially rabbits and birds. And he really, loved life and, and the, the challenge has always been how do you reconcile when you when a loved one is here and then all of a sudden they're gone very there's very lim there really isn't any reconciliation of that it's only the feeling of the love that we had for that person and that what we have to continue to hold on to and build our faith, knowing that if we believe in what the Bible says, we will be with that person again. I know that um, all of us have um, our moments and times when grief overwhelms us. That's natural, that's normal. I myself, at times when, like coming and sharing words today, was unsure of what to say. But I know that really honoring Keith and helping people to appreciate what kind of wonderful person he was and really still is in our hearts and our minds. We know that, um, I know that I loved him dearly and I know that he was loved dearly by many. We know that his we can hear his voice and his, and the mem his memory so will just continue to linger with us. So with that, I would just want to say, I, I, I love you, Keith. Keith Watson, 53, of Meriden, Connecticut, passed away November 6th, 2020 after complications from heart failure and a battle with heart disease. Keith was born March 4th, 1965 to Helen Watson and James Stevens in St. James, New York. He graduated from Wilbur Cross High School in New Haven, Connecticut in 1983. Keith's infectious personality made him very popular with family and friends. Keith was talented and a very skilled basketball player he played basketball while in high school and locally throughout Connecticut. Along with enjoying most sports, Keith loved music and his greatest joy was spending time with family at barbecues and family celebrations. He was a proud car enthusiast, having many vintage and stylish cars. His cars were every bit his pride and joy. Keith loved caring for animals and was very fond of his pets. He had rabbits and birds. Keith was affectionately known to the family as the wild man. His fun-loving spirit will greatly be missed. 
Keith Watson is survived by his brothers, Paul Watson Jr., Roger Watson, and brother-in-law, Robert Sims. Sisters, Daphne Watson, Gwendolyn Sims, Kim Stevens, and sister-in-law, Shirley Watson. Keith is survived by nephews, Tim Simpson, Paul Watson III, Faze, Was Faze Watson Washington, Melvin Watson, Michael Watson, Julian Sims, nieces Geneva James, Safania Simpson Adams, Kenda Sims, Amina Talata, Helen Cherry, Leah Watson, Ebony Purnell, and many more great nephews and nieces. Keith is also loved by numerous cousins and other family and friends. Rest in peace. Uncle Keith, man, Uncle Keith. When I think about Uncle Keith, a couple things that come to mind is family love, being comfortable in your own skin, and loyalty. Somebody that always had my back. I would talk to Keith all the time, and um, the conversation always started the same. It was always, did you talk to your father, and did you talk to anybody out in Cali? That's how our conversations always started. He was the type of the dude that would do anything for you. Um, <laughs> well, besides money, you have to say, you couldn't get the two pennies that was sitting in this cup holder. But anything else you needed, he got you. I remember one time he called me. He was like, yo, Mel Mel, what up, man? I said, what's going on, Keith? He's like, nothing, man, what you doing? I said, nothing, in the middle of raking. My mother wants these leaves up, so I'm just raking up. He was like, oh, all right. Well, call me when you're done, man. I said, all right, Keith. 15 minutes later, guess who's pulling up? Keith. I said, yo, Keith, what you doing over here? He was like, oh, man, I was just at the crib. I wasn't doing nothing, so I figured I'd just come over and give you a hand. That's the type of person Keith was. I didn't ask him, but he just did it. I remember it was like a week before his surgery. I want to say a week before his surgery. And me and him are driving, and he gets a call from, um, I think it was his cousin. Lived on Long Island, some of his Long Island family. And his cousin was telling him how his aunt was in the hospital. So they was talking for like a half hour. And Keith gets off the phone, he was like, yo, Mel, man, I'm gonna need you to take this ride with me. I said, all right, so what's going on? He said, now that was, I forget who it was, but he said, that was just whoever it was telling him how my aunt's in the hospital, man. I wanna get up there and see her, make sure they're doing the right thing. You know, she's older, I wanna make sure they're treating her right and all that. The week before, his surgery, he's worried about family, but that's how Keith always was. You know what I mean? I love you, aunt. I still do, always will. As the saying goes, time heals all wounds. So I'm grateful that I was given some time to formulate my thoughts about Uncle Keith. Keith had a special relationship with each and every one of us. And because of that, I know he will be surely missed. You know, when speaking with friends and family members about Uncle Keith, there was a common thread. His funny stories when he was just being himself. So Uncle Keith, until we meet again, I will patiently wait. Although you are gone, you will never be forgotten. Um, R.I.P. Uncle Keith. Um, this is a tough one for me. Um, so I don't, I really don't know what to say, but I know that, um, it's been difficult knowing that, um, never, you know, see you again, never get to invite you over, um, before you um, before you went to the hospital, I said I was going to bring you some food and that never happened. Um, I just want to think of all the good times, all the fun times, the laughter, the drinks, the food, just being together as a family. Um, the times you drove me crazy, but I always love you anyway. Till we meet again. Hey, y'all. Uh... I, I've been struggling about how to start this and where to begin. I did about three takes before this. Oh, oh. 
four, four takes before this. And it's just, I was just stuck on words and what to put together to really express how I feel about Keith and what he meant to me. But to be honest, there ain't nothing to say. There's nothing to really say. Uh, but there's no word to describe how much Keith actually meant to me. Especially when I look back on it. When I look back on it, all I've ever known is Keith ever being in my life. Whether or not short time, consistently, every other day, every other week, annually, every function, every um gathering, no matter what. That's all I ever know Uncle Keith to be. Sorry for the stuttering, but it is what it is because I just had to get it off my chest. I'm just going to go straight from the heart. Like, I miss you, Keith. I really do. I can't even process that you're gone. And the last conversation that we had was me being in school and you saying I'm proud. I still can't believe that it's really here. But since it is... As you look down on me, I hope I'm making you proud every step in the way with the moves that I do. The movements that I make, I know you're gonna watch over me. I know you're gonna look out and look out for me and everything. I really ain't got nothing much to say. Rest in peace, Keith. I love you, Wump. Miss you. Keith, I just wanna say to you that I miss you so much i'm so sorry that this happened to you and i wish you were still here with us but being left with the realization that you're gone i just want you to know that we will forever carry your memory i love you so much i'll always remember our times where we just laughed and bugged out and just had a good time you always were the life of every party every family gathering and all of us, and I can speak for the rest of the family, will miss those times. Those family functions, reunions, and gatherings to come will not be the same. So I just want you to know that although you're not here with us, that you will always remain in spirit with us. We will all carry you. You will never, ever be forgotten. And you were one of the funnest uncles I ever had. I will continue to never understand why this had to happen. But since I am stuck with the realization that it did happen, I just want you to know that I'm so sorry. I love you. And I promise to always, always carry your memory. We had so many fun times together and, um, our family is really experiencing a great loss with you being gone. So with that being said, say hello to all our loved ones and um, give Kevin a big hug and kiss for me. I love you and you will forever be missed, okay? That's all I wanted to tell you. May you continue to rest in peace, baby. It's a tough one. Keith. Uncle Keith. Keith Watson. What's up, man? I'll miss you. Thinking about Keith. I can honestly say Keith showed me what fresh was. Fresh was a big deal because when hip hop first came out, before swag, before, you know, um, all of this, you know, it was about being fresh and keep was fresh. I mean, down to the suede pumas, down to the uh, sheepskin coats, you know, um, Keith was the definition of fly. Yeah, he was fresh and he was fly. Like Keith brought hip hop when hip hop first came out, you know. It was a new thing, a new phenomenon we didn't know. People didn't know if it would last or whatever, but Keith represented that. He embodied that. He personified that. So for me, as a young kid growing up, I'm looking at this dude, you know, because he was one of the cool uncles. Like, we had, you know, 
stringent, kind of disciplinarian uncles. You don't want to mess around, you know, get my pops, you know, they can get that belt. You remember the belt, the two-tone belt, you know, that we passed between floors and families. Everybody knew that belt. But Keith was, he was more like a brother. You know what I'm saying? Like an older brother. He was that cool uncle, man. So whenever anything would be going on, you wanted to be around Keith. You know what I'm saying? Keith had the fresh whips. You know what I'm saying? He always cleaned his stuff. You know, he would take his shoes and he would clean his shoes with, with toothbrush. He showed us that. He showed us what fresh was. He had the waves. You know what I'm saying? Keith always had the fresh waves and he had the cute girls. You know what I'm saying? Keith had the girls. He was popping. Keith was my hero, bro. You know what I'm saying? I miss you so much, man. I'm just... I'm trying to just think about the positive and just and talk about, you know, how I want to celebrate, you know what I'm saying, my uncle. Um, he loved basketball. And um, that was all the motivation that, you know, I needed was an older uncle that could just be out there playing in the backyard all day. I could still hear his nails from when he would swish. He would have such a, a spiral on the ball, such a spin on the ball that he'd come off his hand, boom, swish. Nothing but net, you know, screaming Elvin Hayes, you know, he would always be on that. Um, and he wouldn't let you win. No, you had to earn it. You had to learn how to come overcome obstacles. So I'm like four foot tall. He like six feet tall. He blocking my shot. But that's what made me get better was playing with my uncle Keith, man. Keith was the man. Um, the family ba uh, basketball games in the backyard. I mean, we had everybody out there. Uh, Daff, uh, uh, Gwen, uh, Uncle Raj, Pops, you know, uh, everybody. I think Shirley World was even out there. You know, all the kids, all of us, you know what I'm saying? Neva, Fanya, uh, you know, and those games were brutal. I mean, you know, whatever people couldn't make up with skill, they would scratch you. They'd do what they had to do. Like, it was a real Watson event, man. But um, Keith was always there, and, and Keith would always, like, you know, um, he instilled my love for basketball. Uh, I would later play basketball in high school because of Keith. Keith started that. You know what I'm saying? He was the first one. Um, but the family gatherings, he was all about family. He would always be there. Um, talent shows, cookouts. Keith was there, and he, he made us love that. Um, volleyball at Edgewood Park, man. Westville congregation. All of these special times. One quick story I want to just say real quick. Um, and, and I got the... The scar is still to prove it. What a scar. Oh, it's right there. That's the scar. Okay, so my mom, miss you, mom. She uh, brought us all to, I think it was like Lake Quasapa or uh, Indian Wells, one of those. She brought us all the family out there. And uh, we having a cookout. We were at the water and the beach, you know, doing what we do. And Keith comes over and uh, we had a little incident that was there to like ward off any, you know, mosquitoes or whatever. So Keith coming over playing. Keith like to play a lot, you know, do all kind of practical jokes. And he comes over, hey Pookie, yo, and call me Boo Boo. He's like, yo, Boo Boo, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm an African. Ah, a bunga, bunga, bunga. And he hit the ashes on my arm and scarred me to this day. So Keith, you always gonna be with me, bro. Always, always um gonna remember you, man. Um he was very protective of family too. He didn't play around. If somebody was something was going on, family, he pull up. He'd be right there, like, what, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? A couple times he came into the school, like, what's the deal? You know, um, that's my uncle. Uh, I got my love of fashion, hip-hop, family, basketball, all of that uh, for Keith. He's the reason why I keep my kicks clean today. I'm matching and coordinating and doing everything. I love you, Unc, man. Um, one last thing. I remember Keith would come up to me. He'd be like, yo, yo, boo-boo, yo. yo, did you see that shorty right there? Did you see her? You see the thing she... Yo, did you see that? Yo, boo-boo. Yo. We gotta, gotta watch out for all the Puerto Ricans, man. You, you heard that? You see that? Yo, white people everywhere. Yo, boo-boo. But did you see Shorty, though? Know? <laughs> Yo, that's my unk, man. I love you. I'm gonna miss you forever. Um, You always gonna be with us, man. You family. Uncle Keith, rest in peace, bro. Till I see you again. Keith, you were more of a big brother to me than an uncle. And like most big brothers, um, you were relentless with teasing me the way that a big brother would tease their little sister. You were also very relentless in harassing me. <laughs> and it would seem that the more I would get upset 
with the harassing and the teasing, the more you would do it. And that is typical of a big brother, little sister relationship. But as I got older and as you got older and we became adults, you were relentless once again, but in a different way. You were relentless in showing, making sure that I knew just how much you loved me. You were relentless in making sure that I knew how proud you were of me. And now I get to be relentless. I will be relentless in keeping your memory and my heart and sharing it with my daughter, making sure that Spring knows everything about her uncle, ensuring that I'm relentless in just sharing the stories and, you know, making sure that in my immediate um, household and family that um, you remain close to Spring, myself, and Lamont. I will also be relentless in making sure that I continue to make you proud. And I will be relentless in loving you. Um, when we were growing up and coming up, I would have never stated that you really were what any little sister would consider the best big brother ever. I'm happy to say that and I'm happy to have had both you and Kevin as my big brothers. I love you and again I'm going to be relentless in keeping you in my heart and you will remain with me and this is not goodbye. This is merely until we can hug again. I love you and we will hug again.
to the hip hop, the hip it, the hip it to the hip hip hop. You don't stop the rocker to the bang bang boogie. Say up, jump the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie to beat. Do it, man. Everybody, if you got what it takes, cause I'm Curtis Blow and I want you to know that these are the birds.